In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with the divine wisdom, thy judgment, and knowledge, and understanding, to understand the mysteries of our faith, mysteries which you have revealed through your holy prophets and apostles and disciples, which are recorded in our holy scriptures. May your word give us faith, hope, and love, and eternal life. Amen. My friends, my brothers and sisters, today I continue to talk. The <clears throat> one of the greatest remembrance, yesterday we had the Remembrance Day, the 11th November in United States and Canada and throughout the world. For all the people, all the vet soldiers or veterans who died, sacrifice their life for the liberation or freedom of their countries. Now, in our modern times, we say for the freedom of people who are under torture or suppression by different regimes. I'm not going to analyze or interpret those things. Some of them might justify, some of them might don't. Politically, it may not be correct because when there's a, I find a dichotomy in our attitude, especially in the Western world and even United States and Canada or other world leaders in the UN. When things were attacked, so many Christians were being killed and tortured in Darfur, in, uh, uh, in um, even in Indonesia some years ago in Timor. Now, thank God, after a lot of pressure from the United States and United UNO, now it's an independent country where so many Christians were being martyred and killed there by the Islamic terrorists and gangsters. And when the same thing happened in the south of Sudan in Africa, attacks on the Christian population, mutilating the women, and uh, raging them, killing them, and pushing them to the other part of the uh, border, there were no one to cry for them. Only some of our Christian missionaries first went and saw the miseries. Fortun uh, fortunately, it was for the, some of the Protestant communities. Our Christian brothers who heard the cry of the poor and extended the help, Later on, slowly, slowly, President Bush and all other world leaders start speaking about. Of course, now because it was a racial issue between the Arab and black uh, people in Sudan, the more and more Islamic nations also started interfering and they got freedom. What I found was the complete silence when Christians are being tortured and killed in uh, different parts of the world. And it is too late for them. If in Afghanistan or other countries where Islam is attacked, everybody is on the toes, want to save them, protect them. And all are speaking about world human rights, as if there is no human right for the poor Christians being tortured and killed in Egypt, even Syria and Iraq, not only at the time of Saddam or Rosni Mubarak, even now. And I also want to point out today and ask our world leaders, especially all those multicultural prophets of our country of Canada, being a citizen, I have the right to tell and request them, why do you keep silent? when so many Christians were being killed by the Hindu militants every day in India. Churches being vandalized, nuns were being raped and killed, and so many things are happening. The social-religious issues, this is my theme today, the social-religious issues in relation to South Asians, especially in the Indian subcontinent. Three years ago, 2008, Nearly 22,000 people and hearts were burned down in the rural village of Kalamandal in um, Orissa, 
the northeastern province of India. And nobody cared. It was a planned attack by a lot of lies made by the Hindu fanatic leaders there. VHP, RSS, and other Shiva Sena. They attacked and burned the huts and tortured the priests. And one priest from the south, a mystery priest who happened to fall into a Latin pit, took his cell phone and called to the press in, in Kerala. And the news came out. And even then, nobody took interest, neither the government of India. Only later, after two, three years of massacre and arson by the Hindu fanatics and lunatics there, with the support of the Biju Patnai government of Orissa, a BJP-led government, this event happened in our time, not in the past, only because they are poor scheduled caste, lower caste of India. They always blame the Christian missionaries um, converted them forcefully. Let me tell you, I was a minister in the north for some years in the 80s and 90s. We never forced anyone. The only force we gave to the people in that rural areas who have been downgraded by the Hindu higher castes, Brahmins and other higher class of people who still control the governments of different parts of country, only the, or they call Delis, they were given love and appreciation and service and education by our Christian missionaries, nuns and priests, pastors and catechists throughout the whole of India, starting from Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa, Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Orissa and um, north part of Tribura, Manipur, Assam. We what among the tribals and scheduled castes because they have been, have no human dignity at all in the human Hindu worst evil of the, even uh, perpetrated by the Hindu governments, I mean the Indian government and other politicians even now, the caste system. Many of our medias here in America or Canada, CBC, CTV, Global, CNN, or even BBC, they don't recognize the biggest problem going on there. They are only worried about when the Islam is attacked or terrorists are attacked. Then we fire again. This is a kind of hypocrisy about the, our media and our governments even. We never heard about that one. Now, we, the other day I heard a group of Delhi's from Tamil Nadu went to the Parliament of India to protest against the attack by the government there in, um, in Chennai or in Tamil Nadu. Even now, in our modern times, the Delhi's or so-called lower caste Hindus, they themselves killed them. And when they turned to Christianity, when because the faith and dignity and that uh, service we gave to them through our preaching of God's word, that's the only force we made the force of the gospel of Christ, who died for them, for their torturers, as it happened for the people of Israel, tortured by the Roman emperors. Jesus gave the deliverance, not political, spiritual deliverance to the people of Israel. Of course, many did not receive him. They received all the blessing through him, but many of them rejected him. That's a historical factor. But now the same method, same evangelization or missionary work is continued by the Christians throughout the world. We have no other motive than to save these people from their own tortures and human slavery of one sort of or other and give them dignity and give them the message of salvation for the eternal life and give them a good social status in their life. I know for certain so many missionaries from foreign missionaries and Indian missionaries educated so many tribals in Assam and Nagaland. Now they were strong. They are not Hindus at all. And the Sandals and others in Bihar or other parts of the world, 
we educated them to stand up to protect their right and and they accepted Christ because of our work not because we gave them money or forced them and we have no force the are the the church have no army our only force is the power of word of god and now coming back to the instance i had a report i missed that paper today the whole report nearly 22000 people were killed in orissa and none of the media here even mention about that there where was our american and canadian media when something is happening are they afraid of hindus here or are they afraid of uh, islam they are afraid really and they don't want to speak about that one and where are our multicultural prophets of this country they never heard the other day in the omni tv somebody was attacking that we are going to proselytize or convert the people through the new minority uh, protection cell which our harper government want to start to look into this matter is a good gesture and why do you ask for right in this country when you came and became immigrants we came to make money and business and make good life but our white people here the native <coughs> people here they suffered and built up this country in the early centuries in good me we are only to enjoy this life here or to continue that to level but then we had to ask for the rights why don't you fight for the rights and make the pressure on your political leaders and gurus in uh, in india who are attacking even now every day i want to give a reference csf dot com is a channel or website from the um, what you call from mumbai you will see every day the thought is being continued perpetrated not only in orissa now but also in karnataka even tamil nadu attacking the churches and destroying them let me tell you my friends we and our ancestors were hindus like you worshiping all gods and goddesses but we were converted we accept the christ as the only savior that's the only mistake we are the sons and daughters all the christians in india are the sons and daughters of india bharat not only the hindu religious people there the hindu militancy is not never spoken by the media here because they want to at control obama or harper or any political leaders or liberal party here but let them open the eyes if they got a real sense of justice because of their faith why should they suffer what's the wrong we have done to the christians there why this attack is going on even with the congress government in the new delhi well in that days nothing happened and finally with the pressure from the american government and un i mean italy and holy pope our government of india started sending the crp the paramilitary forces it was too late and still the perpetrators continue torturing the people of orissa is a past now maybe peaceful now <clears throat> but i want to refer to that one because in some short small way it is still continued in many states of india including especially karnataka and all the representation we gave to the parliament of india were not well done they make all promises now that is the pressure come from united states and canada who are for human right and world peace why don't you support our christian people being tortured and killed every day in india and why don't why you become partially looking or for your rights in india with the south asian or hindus or muslim or christians in in, in canada from south asian country we fight for our right where are the right of the people in our own countries in philippines or in india or other pakistan where even mp was killed a catholic mp and burned down and nobody made any protest my friends i want to take that attention to you this is not part of the my divine mercy healing ministry is a voice of a suffering missionary here now i worked here in canada for the different parishes 
but all the missions of the First Nation. There's a different stories here. But we never force them. When we suffer, I'm only requesting where are the human rights and protection and dignity for our lower caste Christians who happen to be, who accept Christ as a Savior and God, whether they belong to Catholic Church or Protestant churches or Pentecostal groups. Why are they? <coughs> they were fed up. They were slaves under the Hindu caste system, even now, painful enough. And these are the people, their sons and daughters and friends come to India and Canada and ask for multicultural right. Where are the rights of our Christians in India? Let, us, let me get an answer. You can write to me in my email, nparathuryahoo.com or nparathu gmail. And let our governments and media and social workers, human rights people, rise up and speak, even the churches here in Canada and America. Protect us. I tell you, in my personal experience, these scheduled caste or lower caste people or uh, white migis and so many names are there. I was one mission in the north. They were the sweepers of the world, of the city, scavengers, washing and cleaning all the latrines in the city of Jammu, for example. They had a right. But our Christian missionaries, the Franciscans, came there in the city and start teaching them, bringing them up. And I myself was going around the villages there. One day something happened. I went to my village as usual. I took the little bus to the border and I went there and walking in the dust because the dust was flowing up, blowing up by our Christian people were cleaning the whole muddy with the cow dug, dung and all other dirty things. Of course, that was their work. So I put my, I stand near a, near a small little convenience shop with a young man, he's a good friend of mine, a Hindu boy, a young parent. I was standing there with my, <clears throat> waiting for the dust to cool down because I was getting coffee. And these people are suffering for so many years. So when he's, I was standing there, he asked me, Father Ji, Father, what are you going to do? You are going to teach them English and take them out? Then what will happen? Who will do the work for us? And I told the young man, my friend, you think our people that should do lower caste people here always to be lower caste and cleaners and sweepers all the time? Forget about. Forget it. We are going to take them, educate the children and grandchildren so they will stand up on their own <coughs> and find a better life in those missions. He is an innocent young man, but here the idea that Christians are supposed to be sweepers, cleaners, all the time, is very sad. This is one example. And many other places in the same area mission, my Christian people were uh, tanners. When the cows are killed, dying, and especially the winter time, I found a big problem. At night or midnight, the, Christ the Hindu brothers their friends and neighbors come. Uh, Latif Masi, Guna Masi, whatever the Hindu uh, Christian name for the people, come and take the skin and bury the cow. And the next day, they come late to the police station. As a legal activist, I fought against that evil going on in some areas of that Jammu city, Jammu border areas. I tell specifically Makti. So I told the people, when they come to the police, to ask you to kill the, take the skin of the cows, you ask the police station, police inspector to sign that letter, and with the letter only you go to skin. They did not kill the cow. Cow killed, died because of winter and the infection during the winter time. But they put case against our Christian people, the lower caste people there, that they killed the cow and they had to give compensation, grabbing the money from our poor people. Well, my interference with the police officers and my people, my education, at least in that area, that trouble was stopped. And this is some of the things we still suffer in our mission country areas of India, where I worked several, several years. So my, quest, my point today, 
let us accept the human dignity of the people and the service of missionaries gave. Even our educated Hindu, uh, Hindu leaders or Islamic leaders of Pakistan or India, especially in India, I would say, some of them have gone through our Christian education. In Guri, our BJP leader, Mr. Adwani, was brought up in a Jesuit college or school in Karachi in Pakistan now. When he was born, it was one India. And there are many others. And then, did we convert to them? It is up to them. And many of the people who have been brought to the Christian faith are through the power of the service, the love of God, shown in Christ who died for them. The service of a Christian missionaries did for them. They turned to the faith. Let us be open-minded, reasonable, and don't blame them. And don't, don't be blind when the Christians have been persecuted and killed and tortured and churches being burned down every day in India. Let us not be blind. I request our Hindu or Indian South Asian leaders in this country and our governments and, and media especially to highlight and go and study and report in our country and we have stopped this kind of nonsense in our modern era. When we fight for Islamic people in uh, Libya, Egypt and Afghanistan, why don't we send some mission to India and stop this kind of thing? Sri Lanka or Pakistan or other countries of the world, Thailand and Burma, Nepal, everywhere there is some persecution, not only by the Islamic militant, but Hindu and Buddhist fanatics. God bless you.